Well, there's another way we could look at deriving the formula for area of a rhombus. So let's take a look at these plates. They're going to help us. <clears throat> look at this rhombus. I don't have a base of this rhombus, do I? So we can't use the formula of base times height because there's no base. There's no, no part of this rhombus that's, um, that's functioning as a base. So we are going to have to use the other parts of a rhombus to help us with this. First, let's make sure that these are equivalent. That's equivalent. Let's just make sure. And that's equivalent. Okay. So we're going to identify some other parts of the rhombus to help us with this formula. So let's take a look here. We've got our rhombus. We call this line that extends here the minor diagonal. And remember, we have another diagonal here that's called the major diagonal. So let's label those. For the minor diagonal, we'll use a lowercase d. And for the major diagonal, we'll use an uppercase d. So now let's think about this. We've got a base and a height of this rectangle. Let's take a look and see what become uh, from the rhombus becomes the base and the height. So I'm going to move this triangle over. Oh, look at that. That minor diagonal became the base. And then what about the height? <clears throat> Well, the height, let's just take another peek at it here, was half of the major diagonal. So in fact, if we wanted to find the area, we could multiply the minor diagonal times the major diagonal divided by 2. Maybe you'd like to use this formula to find the area of more rhombuses.